Hi boys and girls. I wanted to do another video, a lesson video for you on solving problems using or with t tables. Okay, we've again we've used t tables throughout the year when we've when we've uh, made our problems a little bit harder. Um, so let's apply t tables today, and hopefully this will refresh your memory on how to apply them to a new problem solving um, to a, to a new problem. Here is your problem for today. Mr. McPherson is running for charity. He raises $2.50 for every lap around the track that he can do in 30 minutes. If he runs eight laps, how much money will he raise? So let's again always start by trying to break down the problem so that we can understand it. So this is going to be an important piece for us. For every lap, I raise $2.50, okay? Every lap that I can do in 30 minutes. If, if he runs eight laps, so that tells you how many laps I do in all. If he runs eight laps, how much money will he raise, okay? So there's two things we're tracking here. We're tracking the number of laps that I run and the amount of money that I make during that time. So let's start off with a T table and we'll just draw it over here. And I'm going to be keeping track of two things. One, I'm going to keep be keeping track of money. So I'm just going to put a dollar sign here just to show that this side is keeping track of the money. And do you remember what I'm going to keep track of over here? laps. That's right. I'm going to keep track of how many laps that I run. Okay, so it's kind of like a two-step problem in that we're going to be looking at a couple of couple of moving parts in this problem. So if I run, run only one lap, how much will I make? 250. Good. Okay, so I'm going to make 250 for one lap. And then I'm going to keep going. Two laps, how much will I make? So this is where some of you are probably already have figured this out, uh, just with your practice, hopefully with the games that we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. So if I want to find out two laps, I'm going to take my 250 and I'm going to add 250 as well to that. Okay, and so if I'm keeping this going and I'm adding here 50 or 0 plus 0, 5 plus 5 is 10, and I can regroup. I can make a, a new dollar here, and that'll be $5. All right, so after two laps, he has raised $5. Okay, and three laps, it's going to be another 250. So I can keep a running total here going. Okay, and that total is going to be. 0 plus 0 and 0 plus 5, drop the decimal, and 7, 750. So after three laps, I'm at $7 and 50, make that a 5, 50 cents. Four laps, four laps is another, so I've raised another 250. Every lap, it's add 250 more, 250 to charity. I'm going to add these ones together here. So uh, I've seen the 50s being added up before, 10, put in the decimal, I'm going to, because I've made 10 here, I'm regrouping a 1, and that's going to be 8, 9, 10. So now I'm at $10 after 4 laps, $10 after 4 laps. Okay, now I'm just going to put a line here, and I'll come back to this line. I'm going to keep going, 5 laps, well 10 plus 250 is going to be 1250. Okay, that's pretty pretty straightforward when we have a, a friendly number like 10. That's going to be 1250. And then some I wanted to point out to you here, just like we've seen in our math, that we're creating a pattern here. Look at my numbers. If I just took away this one here, I have 250, $5, 750,10, 000, 000. I'm back to 250 again. Just like 250 up here. Now I'm just I'm ten dollars further. So if I keep going, 
in my pattern, maybe that'll help you in predicting what six laps is going to be worth as far as fundraising. So if I'm going to add 250 to this, it's like going back to this step here. I'm going to be at $15. And if you're still struggling seeing that pattern, it's always good to have coins on hand or you know, just keep a running total going as you move along here. Seven laps. Okay, seven laps. Well, if 1250 went to 250 went to five dollars, then we're gonna be at the 750 here, so that's gonna be 1750. And then my eighth lap is going to be another 250, which is gonna take me to $20. And that is our answer right here. Now, the reason why I put a line here, boys and girls, is because we know that if I took four and I double it, remember doubling from grade one, if I took four and I doubled it, or times four times two is eight, I could do the same for this total. And 10 times two, or doubling 10, is 20. So even when we're using T tables, if we know what our final lap is going to be, we can find the halfway point and just double those numbers. So in this problem here, Mr. McPherson will raise $20 for charity. Okay, so there's an example of money popping up again uh, in our math problems and the way that we can solve these sorts of problems is by using a t-table. I just want to show you one more problem before you take these strategies that you are aware of and review practice and apply it yourself. In this strategy or in this problem I am combining mass and money and if any of you have ever been to Bulk Barn this is how Bulk Barn works. The amount of food or that you buy for each unit of food that you buy, there is a cost to that. So in this problem, Sam buys peanuts at the store. One kilogram of peanuts costs $2. If Sam buys five kilograms of peanuts, how much will that cost? Uh, so that's I'm going to use a different color pen here. So we know that one kilogram of peanuts, if I just want to buy one kilogram of peanuts, so a bunch of peanuts that weighs one kilogram, it's going to cost me $2. But we know that Sam is buying five kilograms of peanuts. Maybe he's, maybe he's got a bunch of squirrels or he's having a party, whatever. He's buying five kilograms. So if one kilogram costs two dollars we know that five kilograms we're gonna have we're gonna be paying way more than two dollars for that but again we can use a t table to solve this problem because we have two moving parts here we have our dollars which are going to be changing and what else is changing in our problem that's right the kilograms okay because the bag is going to get heavier the more that Sam buys. So if he buys one kilogram, we know that that is worth two dollars. If Sam buys two kilograms, how much would that cost? Good, four dollars. If he buys three kilograms, six dollars, good. If he buys four kilograms, eight dollars I love how you guys are starting to see the pattern here and if he buys five kilograms which is our in our problem it will cost Sam ten dollars so again there is a good use of the t table if you're struggling with how to approach this problem now for some of you all we did was we kept adding two dollars and two dollars and two dollars and two dollars so we know when we are doing repeated addition that's the same as multiplication. So we could have looked at this problem and said, okay, so five kilograms, if he's gonna buy five bags of peanuts, five bags that cost 
two dollars is going to equal ten dollars. All right. So in this problem here, there again, there are multiple ways that we can solve it. A t table is a really good strategy when you have two parts that are moving. If the number of kilograms are changing and the cost is changing, uh, the problem above we had the number of laps was changing and the and the amount of money earned was changing as well. So in our answer here, how much will that cost? So five kilograms of peanuts will cost Sam ten dollars. So in today's work, boys and girls, do your best to try to use the t-table strategy uh, if you have the opportunity um, to use it to help you solve the problem. Good luck and keep thinking.